Ring of Fire activity sparks earthquake fears. There are some places on our planet that are, unfortunately, more prone to disaster than others. Perhaps the most dangerous of all these places has earned itself the nickname the Ring of Fire, as a result of its renowned reputation. This is a path along the Pacific Ocean that is particularly prone to natural disasters. Along this so-called Ring of Fire is a host of active volcanoes, and the alignment of the tectonic plates means that this ring sees the majority of the earthquakes on Earth too. In 2018, researchers began to pick up on a number of earthquakes affecting areas nearby to this geological terror zone, namely Japan, Guam, and Taiwan. However, research conducted in California, which has also seen its fair share of natural disasters, suggests that there may be aftershocks that continue to affect the area, due to the tremors seemingly coming in multiples. What is even more concerning is the belief that this smaller seismic activity has the capability to be building to something significantly larger. This Californian study took a sample of 101 major earthquakes recorded in the area surrounding the Pacific Ring of Fire over a 26-year period, from 1990 to 2016. The research was published in the scientific journal Science Advances and provided some insight in the impact of aftershock activity following earthquakes. Earthquakes are most often caused when tectonic plates meet one another. The movement becomes too great and then the excess energy is released as a shockwave, in turn causing the earthquake. We have long been acting upon the assumption, despite there being statistical inconsistencies when we have looked at relevant seismic data, that an area in that has recently seen a slip in the tectonic plates is more likely to experience a second slip soon after, meaning multiple earthquakes are somewhat likely to occur in the same area, within a reasonable amount of time to one another the reality seems to be a little more complex. As opposed to the residual stress on the fault line, the fracture along which the initial slip first occurred, the ongoing impact is on the surrounding areas, which, with each nearby earthquake, are being pushed increasingly closer to failure themselves. This is what results in aftershocks, adjacent ruptures, and the clustered nature in which earthquakes tend to occur. This pattern has been observed in Taiwan, Guam, and Japan. Whilst they are far from one another in relation to static stress interactions, the seismic shaking has had an ongoing impact, eventually reaching each of these impacted areas. Prior to this analysis, a lot of our understanding, even the elements of which were deemed to be correct, were highly speculative. The ongoing research seems to suggest that the most likely predictor for the location of the next earthquake is the surrounding area, because of the initial shock. We are yet to develop a technology that can inform us how big this will be. So while we can be weary, we are yet to know if this may be an indicator of a significant threat or a slight continuation. It's very much ongoing research. The technology that is being developed here has the potential to save lives, giving much greater evacuation time in the event of disasters. Man discovers mysterious large face on Canada cliffside. Sometimes the answers to mysteries seem to be right in front of us. For over two years, Hank Gus, of an Aboriginal group called the Sheshat First Nation, had been searching for a face that he heard existed on a cliffside on Reeks Island. When he finally discovered that he and Parks Canada First Nations program manager Matthew Payne shared the news with an archaeologist they work with in the area. Describing the face, Payne stated, We went out to see it recently, and it's remarkable. It really is a face staring back at you. The Seshat have lived in the area for thousands of years, and one goal is to find out if the face goes along with any oral histories the Sheshat have. Another question archaeologists would like to answer is if the face is man-made or a natural creation. A barrier to discovering more about the face, which is believed to be about seven feet tall, is that the cliff where it resides is very dangerous. The island has a rocky shoreline with lots of hidden rocks, and it can be dangerous depending on sea conditions, commented Payne. You need to know what you're doing to go and look at it. Despite these barriers, the Seshat First Nation and Parks Canada are eager to look at the face close up. Whether or not the face is man-made or created by Mother Nature, 
it's reported to be quite striking. The fact that it has been witnessed by so few to date is rather incredible and shows how new discoveries can pop up just about anywhere. Huge chimpanzee population thriving in remote Congo forest The Congo forest is known as one of the most treacherous places on Earth. Despite the dangers lurking in this colossal forest, the local chimpanzee populace is seemingly flourishing with life. The Congo forests border the Central African Republic. Legends of old claimed the existence of colossal apes that howled at the full moon and devoured lions and predators, but these were believed to be merely myths. After a team of researchers wandered through the forest's unlisted lands, they discovered what is thought to be a chimp megaculture, possibly the last of its kind, with a huge population of chimps. German primatologist Cleve Hicks states, This is one of the few places left on Earth with a huge continuous population of chimps. We estimate many thousands of individuals, perhaps tens of thousands. This would make the chimp populace the largest in Africa. Because the land was uncharted, we have insight into how chimps and apes act in completely natural environments removed from any prior human interruption. The chimps in the Bilyuli forest are larger than most other chimps, meaning the legends have seeds of truth in them. And they have, in fact, been spotted devouring leopards. In the colonies of the forest, male chimps patrol the area while mothers teach their young to utilize tools and eat insects, and there is a definite order and way of living for these chimpanzees. The cameras the researchers placed around the forest showed that aside from the chimps, there are olive baboons, hyenas and forest elephants all residing in the area, and so much more wildlife. According to Hicks, we saw incredible amounts of wildlife on our camera traps, but we did not catch a single film of a human. It remains one of the last untouched wildernesses in Africa. The Billy chimpanzees were first found in 2008, but the research did not occur until recently with the published study in the Journal of Biological Conservation. As it stands, in Africa, humans alone have destroyed chimpanzee habitats so badly that in just the past century, their population has gone from millions to several hundred thousand, which emphasizes the importance of this discovery. However, researcher John Hart claims the area is at great risk of being opened up and explains that the Lord's Resistance Army are trying to move through the part of the forest and brigands from the area are trying to create conflict bases in the Congo forest that will endanger the animals. Scientists and researchers worry about hunters seeking to invade this previous unfounded section of the Biliuli to hunt the chimps and elephants to trade in the Congo Basin. Around 440 chimps are eradicated annually for trade. Hart says, with the availability of bushmeat declining elsewhere, commercial bushmeat hunters are going further and further into the forest. DRC law protects chimpanzees due to their endangered status. However, the law is only applicable if hunters get caught. Officials can be bribed, and according to Hicks, that is often the case, since the local militia benefit at times from these huntings. Hicks believes the military is even giving weapons to the poachers. The chimp megaculture is helpless to poachers should they decide to invade the area and hunt the animals with no proper or solid protection. Elephants especially have already been severe victims of poaching and they, along with chimps, cannot stand to suffer an even larger population loss. Hart desires for there to be a unit of wildlife guards who circle the forest and protect the animals inside in order to stop the hunters. According to Hart, it is a very significant opportunity to preserve a whole ecosystem of chimpanzees. Elsewhere on this continent, this opportunity just does not exist. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.